Good morning, everybody. As we go to the Chita, so today we are holding Pasha Mitzeda. We are holding in the chapter 15, verse number 16. The man has a discharge. Semen. Then he goes to the mikveh. That's called besare. He goes to the mikveh and he covers the water. Needs to cover his whole body. With Tommy on the other, and he's impure until the evening. And any kind of garment. Anybody has any of the garment that has upon it this discharge. Chubas b'mayim it needs to be purified in water. Vitame ad orev, and it becomes impure until the evening. If a man has a relationship with a woman, and they shall immerse, they have to go to the mikveh. So sexual union brings about impurity. Vitame ad orev, and they are impure until the evening. Now she says, it's divine king's decrees, the Gzeris HaMelech, the Abish's decree that a woman becomes defiled through a through relationship. And the reason is, not that she came into contact with the semen, because it, it, it didn't. It's inside her body. This constitutes contact with hidden parts of the body, which does not defile a person if it's in a hidden part of her body. But over here, the Taylor tells us that through a relationship, the person becomes impure. That's why you have the you have the command before Matan Teda that men and women should not have a relationship, that they should go into Matan Teda impurity. Now we come to the most very difficult laws of the Teda, the laws of Anida and Azava, <clears throat> which, uh, as I say, it's still today, the laws of Nida, laws of impurity of a mental cycle, which today we put them together, the law of Nida and Azava are, are, are as one, to become one law today. Isha Kisia, if a woman, oops, I'm sorry, if a woman has a discharge, the flesh discharges blood. We're not talking about menstrual cycle after her menstrual cycle. Shiva Shamim, Zava Besada, Shiva Shamim, she remain in a state of a menstrual separation for seven days. Tibinidasa. And whoever touches her shall become impure. Now she says, one might think that means for any part of her organs. The potato says from the fountain of her blood. It teaches that the only blood that defiles her comes from the womb. That's a general law. That only blood that comes from the womb, not from any kind of other infection or other thing that has to come blood from the womb. Dam Yezavar Savar. The last the woman discharges, not called a defiled discharge unless it's red. The difference between a man and a woman. Binidasa, what means Nidasa? And, and uh, like a chasim Yidnu in the world, she's separated, Menuda, she's not allowed to have a relationship with her husband. That's just called a Nida. She has to separate herself from her husband. Tia Binidasa, even if she saw only the first sighting, a drop of blood, any blood that comes from the womb is makes a mix of woman impure. We call her Shatishka Binidasa. Whoever has a relation with a woman in a mental cycle, Yitma becomes impure. But Rachat Bamayim, and she needs the person needs to wash herself on the mikveh, the tummy at the other, and she's impure till the evening. Chala Negea, whoever touches the whole Kli. In any vessel, a shateso love, which this nida sits upon it, yechabes begodov, needs to wash his clothes. But achatz b'mayim needs to go to the mikveh. The tami adarav, and he becomes pure until the evening. Im ala mishkav who ayal kela she yeshev alav, and if he is on the bedding or the object upon which he was sitting, when the geyaba yit madar becomes clean till the evening. So again, we learned this. Yesterday, the difference between Mishkav and Merkav, someone who lies and sits upon her bedding or upon her seat, even if he does not touch it, 
and he sits upon a seat that's on the seat, the person is nevertheless also included in the law of uncleanness stated in the previous verse, and he requires immersion of his garments. Alakli, this includes include riding gear. When the geaba, even when he touches it, this clause refers to exclusively riding gear, which includes the word or benegay or benegay by yitma, but he does not require immersion of his garments. For touching unclean riding gear does not defile people, does not defile people to defile garments. If a man has a relationship with a, with a woman, and her menstrual cycle comes upon him while they're having the relationship she has, she starts her period. They shall become unclean for seven days. And any bedding he lies upon, Yitma. Now says one might think that he follows in her footsteps, meaning that he's that if he had a relationship with her on the fifth day of her menstrual cycle, he too is unclean only for three days, like her. Therefore, the Torah continues, he shall be unclean for seven days. So what does the clause here mean? Then the cleanliness of a man shall be upon him. Comes to teach us, it means that the same laws of her uncleanness apply. And so for as such, as she defiles people in earthen vessels, so does he defile people in earthen vessels. He becomes tummy like her. That's the law of Anida, the Isha Kiyaz of Dhamma. Now we go to the law of Azava, a woman whose flow of blood flows for many days. Belaying Nidasa, outside the time of a menstrual cycle. Oikisav dana alidas, or she has a discharge after her menstrual cycle. Call you may zav to masa, ki may nidas Then she shall become unclean, just like the days of her menstrual cycle. What means yamim rabim? What means extra days? Hashi shesh leishi yamim, three days above her menstrual cycle. Belei sidacha das, meaning after the seven days of her menstrual cycle, uncleanliness has passed. Not within the period of a menstrual uh, cycle, it's after her menstrual cycle. Aikisav, dam aikisav, these three days. Alni dasa means separate from the period of a menstrual by one day. This is a zava, whose law is decreed in the passage, unlike the laws of a menstrual cycle. So, as this one, a zava, a woman who discharged for three consecutive days. Requires a counting of seven days of clean, of blood and sacrifice for her purification. Where menstrual is required by law to count clean days, is not required, I'm sorry, to count clean days. So a zava counts seven days. Rather, men need to remain in a state of menstrual separation for seven days where she sees an issue of blood or not. Our rabbis expose this passage as follows, between the end of one period of menstrual to the beginning of the next, there are 11 days interval, so that if during the 11 days she sees an issue of blood for three consecutive days, she's a zava, she becomes this law. Call anything that any bedding which she lies upon. Call you may zava all the days of her zava of a discharge. Kimishkav nidasa yela. She has the law of a person who's betting that she sat upon. And any vessel that she sits upon, a chair. Tame year becomes impure. Like the, her, the tumma of a menstrual cycle. Anybody who touches them, any vessel, becomes impure. They become a, a rishen, a tumma. And they shall wash their clothes. They have to go to the mikvah. Tell me, and they are impure until the evening. Verse 28. If she becomes, she stops her cycle, or stops this, this discharge. She has to count seven days. And then she becomes pure. Again, these are the very intricate laws of a, a nida and a zava. 
very hard laws, and you have to know the difference between them. Today, we don't, and uh, therefore, we mix the two together. And that's why every need, every menstrual cycle, a, person, a woman waits for seven days, and then she goes to the mikvah on the eighth day, on the seventh day at night. And that completes the law, this the Chumash of today. We are holding the 41st chapter of Tanya. And this, the next statement of the Alter Rebbe, is, a, is one of the 12 sukkim that the Alter Rebbe asked every child to know by heart. The Rebbe points out that the Alter Rebbe will now go on to say that the above meditation aimed at awakening in the eighth awe of, in one's mind does not suffice. As individual must also realize that God not only bestows a kingship upon him in general manner, but he also does so, so to speak, in a personal manner. And that's why the Alter Rebbe wanted that everybody should know this statement by heart. The next statement that we're going to say. Hashem Nitzav Olav. It's not just that the Abish the Shvili Nivrael and the Abish is waiting for him so to say, to do his mission. But God is standing upon him. And the whole world is filled only with the glory of God. And not only being uh, God does not only see everything, but moreover, he scrutinizes him. God has a straight vision to me in particular. And he searches the, his reign, relave in his heart. Meaning the innermost thoughts and emotions to see if he serves him as it fitting. So that's the concept that the Jew has to realize that the Abish is standing on top of me, standing and waiting right now. And he's looking within me. And he's waiting for me to move my heart. To have Avedas Hashem. That I should have an emotional, I should wake up my heart and have Avas Hashem. It's not something in theory. The Abish, the God is waiting for something in reality. He's simply waiting on top of me. He's standing on top of me. He's right here looking at me saying, please do something. Move your heart. Have Avas Hashem. Have Yiras Hashem. If you understand the top statement, then you would then I would have trepidation. I would have my service presence with awe and fear. Meaning notes to that, but not merely like one who's lo who's located in the king's domain. But moreover, like he's standing before a king. It's not only him in the palace. I'm in the palace of God. I'm in the palace of the king. I'm standing in front of the king. The Abish is standing. God is standing right in front of me. And must meditate profoundly at length. On this concept, the Abish is standing right on me. He's looking at me. According to capacity of apprehension of his brain and his thought. According to what's available to him to devote to this contemplation. This time, being before he engages in the learning of Teda, or in any mitzvah, for example, before you put on your tefillin, think about this. You're doing this mitzvah. You're doing it because God is here waiting for me. Simply looking at me and waiting for me to do the mitzvah. The Abish is sitting with us right now and learning Torah. He's been waiting a whole, the whole time that we've come together and learned Torah. Right now. This meditation will enable him to then serve God with awe. If you really think about it before you do it, you will serve the Abish with awe. It's impossible that you should think about this and not serve God with awe. It's impossible. You need to stop. We need to stop for a second and simply think about this. And it will create an Ava and a Yira to the Abish.
And that completes the Tanya for today. Today is Yud Aleph Nissen. It's a very special day, the birthday of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Yud Aleph Nissen, 122 years ago. And the Tilab of today is chapter 60 to chapter 65. You do those six chapters, you do the Chitas of the day. And um, also say an extra capital till today, chapter 123 in honor of the Rebbe. Chapter 123. And let's hope in this chus of the Rebbe is in the Shama that came down to the world to elevate this whole world. The Rebbe's mission was to bring Mashiach to the world. That was his mission, as he said it openly himself. That was his mission to bring Mashiach to the world, that his mission should be completed. And through this chus of, this, of the Rebbe, we should all go out of Golis and go to the Holy Land and the coming of Mashiach and the revelation of godliness in the world. And we'll celebrate even this Pesach, this Monday night, and add it to Israel with the Beis Amitash Ashlishi. And we'll bring the carbon Pesach from Heda, be Amen, Mamash. I wish you a wonderful Shabbos, Shabbos Hagodol, the Shabbos. I hope you learn the Chitas wherever you are. And Mitch Shem. We'll meet each other 8 a.m. on Sunday morning. We'll continue the Chitas of the day. Shabbat Shalom. Have Amen. A beautiful Amen.